Shalom everyone, Joshua here, and welcome to another episode of Undoctrinate. Question, do you really know what you're putting in your body that the doctors just willy-nilly tell you to take? Bet you don't, and covers don't always hold the truth. This is going to be a long one, peeps, so bear with me. Recently, a brother in Mashiach had uh, asked if I had heard of and or what my thoughts are on Depakote. And I said, oh, well, you know, I'd heard of it. I was familiar with it being utilized as a form of treatment for those with seizures and uh, migraines. But at any depth, I, you know, was unaware of, you know, its chemical makeup, this, that, and the third. And so, yeah, this is going to be a long one, peeps. Bear with me. But uh, it was pretty eye-opening for myself and was really making me question just everything. I mean, just everything. The food industry, just every industry out there and what they are really, quote, feeding us, unquote. All right. So what I found out was that my brother, Mashiach, his daughter was put on Depakote without his consent by his former spouse who went and had her diagnosed with, you know, blah, 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 manic depression, whatever hooby dooby nonsense that some doctor came up with. And uh, so I decided to look into this. And peeps, I'm telling you, man, these people got us hook, line, and sinker for real. Check this out. Depakote, this is what the common packaging looks like this is what you might find of course you have these tablets and they'll be coated with some extended release coating that's wow that was something else to find out about so on another note this is also how you delve into things peeps this is how you dig into it all right let's go ahead and i'll show you where i started right up here peeps Depakote MSDS. And of course, I downloaded the PDF. Boom. Right here. So, Depakote ER. What pops up? Divil Pro X Sodium Extended Release. Depakote ER 500. Yada, yada, yada. All right, but I noticed sodium straight out of the gate. And I'm thinking, okay, so they're using sodium as a prime factor in this pharmaceutical. All right. Well. Let's go to section two, peeps. Take a trip, take a trip. All right. Classification of the substance or mixture. Regulation EC number 127, blah, blah, blah. Acute oral toxicity. It's a cat four. Skin cor corrosion irritation, cat two. Serious eye damage irritation, cat two. And reproductive toxicity, cat 1A. All right. Classification according to EU Directive 67 548 EEC or 1999 45 EC. Indication of danger XN harmful, Lexi irritant R22 harmful if swallowed R3638 irritating to eye and skin. R61 may cause harm to the unborn child. So, what are the ingredients now that we've gone over that? And down here in section two, uh, label elements here. I'm not going to read through all of the other H and P numbers. They're <laughs> looking like some OBD codes there. Anywho, let's look at ingredients because this was quite revealing as I was very unaware of what was going on. So the first main ingredient that appears here is sodium hydrogen devil proate. Now check this out. It has an EEC classification and you see what I see. Huh. EEC classification seems to state everything I just read off up here, peeps. Harmful. Irritant, harmful if swallowed, irritating to eyes and skin, may cause harm to the unborn child. Now, you tell me, but that's the number one ingredient. Wait a minute, wait a minute, all right. 
let's go see what's really going on. So what you do is you highlight things, peeps. You highlight it. You come research it, right? So you hit the copy button. Then you come over here. And I've already got it pulled up up here somewhere. Which one was it? La ta ta. La ta ta. Well, this was hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. This all right, is really just where I need to go. I can probably just skip the other one because the other one's really just sodium increase. Oh, yeah. The increase in the hemoglobin. Yeah, so there was a point to that, and I apologize. I was about to get sidetracked because when you look into this whole divil prox sodium, all right, so you can go in here, a fatty acid with anticonvulsant properties used in treatment of epilepsy. And apparently they have found some help that it um, can be used for migraines because it may act by increasing gamma amniburitic acid levels in the brain or by altering the properties of voltage-dependent sodium channels. Hmm. Altering the properties. It's called mind control, peeps. They're playing with brain stuff i mean in sodium uh like potassium is used for muscles so you know when we use our muscles we're not just sitting around doing nothing getting fat and lazy we use our muscles we're burning sodium all right so it might the the devil product sodium might not be so bad for those that are actually highly active but then again i go back to the whole msds sheet i mean come on now y'all saw that Right there, sodium, hydrogen, devil pro it, EEC classification, just listed all that. So they say they've been using this for a long, long time. But anyway, most people are not active enough to be using up sodium in their body that they're already ingesting through their diet and uh, through the food and beverages they consume, right? So... Mm -mm -mm. Gosh, which one was it? Yeah. Oh, man, I think, unfortunately, peeps. Uh, ah, here we go. Here we go. So this one was the article from PubMed that I'd stumbled across regarding um, the effects of devil product sodium on hemoglobin level. So this is just an abstract, the full one, but a small number of molecular and clinical studies found an association between increases in fetal hemoglobin concentration and valproate use. However, the effect of valproate on hemoglobin level has not been studied. When did this article come out? In 2009. So I'm sure there's probably been some kind of baseline studies that have been done. I just haven't come across them. But at this time in 2009, you know, they did this, uh, this review, all right, and they found a correlation and a change in the hemoglobin level by using the valproate, all right? So there was enough evidence to show a correlation in the increase, all right? Now, so you keep studying into this. I'm not sure what all has come out from it. However, all right, now that we've done the whole valproate side of things, let's look at one of these other main chemical ingredients. All right, peeps, back to the MSDS sheet. This was the one that I really needed to get to, quite frankly. Um, you can look up titanium dioxide. It's interesting what all that is used in. I, I just don't buy into a lot of this stuff, peeps. I just don't buy into a lot of this stuff. Um, but it was really this one right here. This is the one that got me that will lead us to an article for us to take a look at. And this is the one. Hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. All right. Now, it does not have an EEC classification. 
not hazardous under EUGHS substance classification, right? But man, not everything is as it seems, I'm telling y'all. All right. So now if we come up here, get back in. Ah, did I just seriously close the one I needed? <laughs> Hilarities ensues. Anyway. Hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Polymeric compounds that contain... Repeating units of hydro hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, the properties of hypromellose polymers can vary greatly and are defined by their molecular weight, the percentage of hydroxyl groups, the percentage of hydroxypropyl groups, and viscosity measurements. So, it is used as food additive, excipients, and lubricants. You can see here all sorts of classification codes and blah 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 and all these people that think they're smart and know something but yeah let's dig more into this so did I still have it now anyway let's go to this article straight away and just end this because I know it's been a long one. Thank y'all for tagging along. This article is back from 2009. This is something vegetarians, vegans may know about. I was unaware of. So the truth about vegetarian capsules. Natural gelatin versus hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. This comes to us from Words on Wellness by Andrew Lessman. And I am going to skip the introduction stuff and get straight into the meat of this. In the meantime, I noticed a number of inquiries and posts relating to our gelatin capsules, and I just thought I would provide a little information. First of all, if there was a truly natural vegetable-based capsule available, then I would have been the first person using it long ago. But sadly, nothing exists. I have been exploring the use of a vegetable-based capsule for almost 30 years, but there is no true vegetable-based product that I would put in my body on a daily basis. The quote vegetarian unquote capsules you see on the market are not made from vegetables, and the more you know, the more you would be concerned about them and avoid them as well. They are not vegetable based at all, but are merely not made from animals. They actually have a closer relationship to the paper in your daily newspaper or a building under construction than to anything you would ever contemplate eating or putting in your body. Although approved for and commonly used in food, I believe the even more common use of hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is as a part of numerous construction materials. So Mr. Lessman goes on to say that uh, his desire for a vegetarian capsule goes back almost 30 years, strict vegan, eating no animal or dairy products, had to throw out all the vitamins in his um, cabinet there. And uh, let's see, where was it at? Do, do, do. So he goes on to say, as many of you know, I am no longer a vegan, but I would still estimate that almost two thirds of my meals are vegetarian, in parentheses, vegan. As a result, I do not cavalierly or carelessly consume animal products, including my capsules. But same goes for my consumption of vegetable products, including, quote, vegetarian, unquote, capsules. I choose to consume vegetarian based foods in a healthy fashion and a quote vegetarian unquote capsule has nothing to do with the vegetables and even less to do with health. Did you catch that? Even less to do with health. As I said before, these capsules are made of a compound that I and other health oriented individuals would choose never to consume. Hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Unfortunately, the image we all have of it, vegetable capsules being made 
from wonderfully healthy vegetables is patently false, and the more accurate image would be of the wood pulping factory of the or of the paper manufacturing industry, since that is the closest image you will have to the source of hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. So as you can see, this is still actually a huge, huge industry-wide problem. So what it is, that capsule that they're putting around pills made of this hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, Guess what, peeps? That is what they're using to coat these tablets with. And that is something we're all ingesting. And that has me extremely concerned. And yeah, I am quite frankly praying with all supplication. To the Father in Shamayim to remove this garbage rubbish from my life. I don't want anything to do with it anymore. I don't. I mean, all they are is alchemists. That's all they really are. And deep down inside, I'd just say chemists just really still want to, you know, whatever, turn something into gold. I don't know. Turn a rock into gold, whatever. It's just alchemy, man. And we really don't know what we're putting in our body. We don't have long enough studies. And even the long enough studies don't suggest that it's good enough for everybody. So it, there again, you know, if you're taking something that's already high concentrations of sodium, you're just putting on top of the sodium you're already putting into your body. So maybe here again, it's not rocket science. Start with the diet. And get that in check. And I am, by the grace of Yeshua, by his chesed, I am here somewhat healthy, able to overcome ailments. I plead again his mercy, you know, and praise his holy ways. But it's because he's led me on a healthier diet, you know. Once I started with the diet of the mind, and the brain, the heart, and the soul, it led to a physical diet. And it's amazing. It's just quite amazing. I and mean, it's just like, yeah, humans do have a chemical imbalance, especially in industrialized nations where there is a lot of prosperity in the fact that we can overconsume products willy nilly every day. I mean, seriously, the most overabused two drugs consumed across the globe, adults and children alike. Or alcohol, uh, not alcohol, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, caffeine and refined sugars, peeps. I'm telling you, so yeah, a broken clock is right twice a day, correct? So when you go to the doctor and they tell you you have a chemical imbalance, well, they're right in the regards that you have a chemical imbalance, but they're wrong in the fact that they're just going to try and pharma dope you up, right? Nah, your chemical imbalance starts because your diet's all jacked up, and that's the end game right there. I mean, psh. Really, get your diet in check, start eating somewhat healthy, and wow, stop watching all the rubbish filth on television, that putrid garbage, listening to the putrid filth music that's all hateful or all about sin and debauchery, and you know, you clean your mind up, life gets a lot better, and of course, then you start seeing the light clearly because you're not chasing the shadows with your back turned to the light. I mean, truly, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, few there be that find it. I mean, obviously, prophecy is being fulfilled right now. So there you go. It's not all what it seems to be, peeps. <laughs> wood pulp. Wood pulp. And it's just not made from animals, so they call it vegetarian plant material. And literally, if you go back to the... This is what got me, is the fact that the MSDS sheet doesn't say nothing about it. I mean, I would think that the same EEC classification should be right down one little line below it, right up in there. Huh. Quite strange. So that, peeps, is how you dig into stuff. That's how you actually research. Now, as for what I'm going to tell my brother in Mashiach, yeah, it's a spiritual issue. It always has been. I mean, if anyone even... 
you know, listen to the verses of scripture I read off today, you know, our weapons of warfare are spiritual. 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 I do not wrestle flesh and blood, peeps. I wrestle the spirits that you are entwined with. Yeah. I wrestle those spirits. I wrestle the demonic spirits that are trying to attack me to get me to lust through the Instagram and YouTube algorithms, popping up these half naked women, you know, trying to get me tempted and all this, that, and third, because they serve the Antichrist spirit, man. They serve the Antichrist spirit. Revelation 17, 17. All right. You know, Revelation 9, 11. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. It's because you're not thinking spiritually. You're thinking of it from the carnal mind. That's why I'll never pick up a weapon created by the hands of men to use on any other human being that comes at me because I don't wrestle flesh and blood. There again. If you don't get it, you don't get it. So yeah. Covers mean nothing, peeps. Covers mean nothing. You can stare at the cover of the Torah all you want to. But until you dig into that word and study to show thyself approved, nothing will ever be revealed. Truly there is one call. It is to repent and believe. You turn your hearts, minds, and souls to Yehoshua. And if you don't want to do that, then I dust my feet off. <laughs>